It looks like the red, it's hitting the collet. That's just because I didn't have a tool that's long enough. Now this is passes. This one looks like it just stays at the the milling line as close as possible. That's pretty good. Left climb milling is the way I want it. I don't want conventional milling. You get better edge finish with climb milling. Okay, minimum cutting radius. This I would assume is would be connected to the actual tool diameter, but I guess it's not. I'm gonna keep it at default. Smoothing deviation. I never saw that one before. I'll see what... I don't think I really need it. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah, I want zero millimeters for that. I don't want it to cut corners at all. Let's see what this does. Multiple finish passes. You know, I can do that with a roughing pass, so I'm going to keep that not selected. That looks normal. Yeah. I'm going to just do one finish... Hopefully it does one finish pass. We'll find out, I guess, in the... If we can actually show the process of cutting it out. Hmm. Kind of like the lead-in, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yeah, that's good. Repeat finishing pass. I'm not sure what it's going to do with that, so I'm going to leave that alone. I think the lead-in distance I'm going to want to be probably about 30 millimeters. Let's see what happens with that. The lead-end distance. I'm not actually sure what that is. No, I'm not going to use that. Yeah, I'm not really concerned about lead-out. I think I'm going to... It says roll around corners. I don't want to roll around the corner. I want to keep the sharp corner. But we really don't have any corners in this. But I'm going to select that anyway. It doesn't really matter. I have no idea what this is. Preserve order. Both ways. Let's see what happens. And roughing. Um, yeah, one step over is fine. That looks like it's a lot. We'll see what happens. Multiple depths. Nope. Stock to leave. I think we want positive stock to leave. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. Yeah, we'll try that. Smoothing. I think we're going to keep that off. And feed optimization. This is for, I think, constant velocity. So if there is a directional change that is 25 degrees or more, I guess, it will reduce the feed rate. So I'm going to keep that at these defaults. You know, I'm not going to optimize the speed. I'm going to see what happens. And then linking. What is this? High feed rate mode. I'm going to keep it like that, I think. Keep default. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to make it three millimeters. Okay, here's the lead in. It's like it's leading in from the outside. It's not ramping down. Lead in entry. Okay, we'll do that. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. Linear. We'll find out what happens here. Perpendicular. Okay. All right, so we can ramp. That's fine. Maximum ramp step down. Specifies the maximum step down per revolution of the ramping profile. This parameter allows the tool to load to be constrained when doing full width cuts during ramping. I'm going to keep that at default. Height of ramp over the current stock level. Yeah, that's good. And positions. All right. So let's press OK. Let's see. Can we? Oh, it looks like it's got a warning. Okay, so keep sharp corners. I will probably undo the keep sharp corners and roll around. So I'll just do that. It should be fine after that. Yeah, that's good. All right, simulate. Why isn't it simulating? I guess, is that the simulation? So it's going to go down and go around. Okay. I want to see it move. Loop. What does that do? Yeah, let's loop it. Okay, so how do we simulate? Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. We should put stock in. Now what's ramping down really slowly? I want to change that ramp. Looks like the red, it's hitting the collet. That's just because I didn't have a tool that's long enough. Oh no, that's go d only doing it on the... Yeah, it's only doing it on the um, holding tabs. Well, that's pretty cool. Alright, stop. Okay. I'm going to change my ramp. So it ramps down slower. How do I edit? Oh, I want to... Load stock. 
Alright. Okay, so that didn't do much. Not a model less stock. Okay. How do I stop this? Stop the simulation. I clicked on the action simulate. And when I clicked on it again, it gave me no valid toolpath and it went back to to this. There's gotta be a, a better way to do that. Well, I need to do to do some other stuff anyway. So let's do that. Stop the simulation. Wait. Oh, look at this. Huh. Close. Oh, there you go. It was hiding from me. Okay, so simulate. Check this out. This is interesting. Stock. Oh, look at that. All right, let's try to simulate it now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's where the tool needs to be changed to a longer length. Well, that's kind of cool how it does this. I think the actual running of it is pretty inefficient, so I'm going to increase the lead-in degree. You can see how this part right here could potentially be a um, an area that will pop out of the machine if we didn't have holding tabs here. And this would just be loose and the vacuum would want to try to pick it up. So let me see if I close that. That's good. We can also see where the uh, the roughing and finishing pass is here. That's really nice. So we can see that it, it does a roughing on the outside and then it does a finishing pass. So I'm going to um, see if I can lengthen the tool. Can I edit this tool? So I can't put in tools. Hm. Oh, I can edit the tool. Hey, look at that. Is this the one I'm using? Untitled. Huh. There we go. I'm just going to edit this one. Edit tool, I copy them, that's nice. Alright, so... Flute length. I'm going to change this to one and a quarter. Yeah. Uh, let's see, shoulder length. I'm going to just go with a half inch. Not really sure what it is. Or one and a half inch. Body length. Three, let's say three inches. That's not going to be right. Okay, whatever. Yeah, let's do that. Two inches coming out, two and a half inches, that's fine. Shoulder length, what is that? I think these are about the same, actually. The body length, I'm going to go with one point. Uh, 7.5. That looks better. Okay. Yes. Override. Okay. So now I shouldn't have that problem with the simulation. So let's go ahead and simulate again. And play. Still have to change my lead-in angle. That looks like it's about the right speed as well. Could probably run it a little faster, but... I'm gonna go with this for for now. All right, I'm gonna change my lead in because it's taking too long. So the lead in should be probably more of it like maybe a five degree angle. Because under passes, ramp, let's increase this angle. Let's see what that shows. That looks better. You can see the ramping coming down here. I think I can go even further. Let me increase the ramp to 10 degrees. 
All right. There we go. That's better. So let's go ahead and do a simulate again. That's better. If I was using a an end mill that doesn't like to plunge, I would reduce the the angle of the lead in, the ramp. It's not really a lead in, it's a ramp. Leading in is more of a a sideways motion rather than a going up and down. So that was a lot faster. Okay, so now I need to do the holes. Let's close this. Let's do some drilling. Drill. That one, that one, that one. I want these to be done first, though. so I think I need to change the order here, I'm guessing. Oh, let's see, selected, whole faces, 10 faces. Sure, auto merge whole segments. When drilling a hole with multiple segments, enable to have neighboring segments included automatically. I have no idea what that means. Order by depth, no. Optimize order, that's good. Order inside out, eh. Tool orientation, that's fine. Okay, I think these are good. Bottom height, whole bottom, yeah. I think I wanna go a little farther down from the whole bottom. I wanna go a little deeper. Yeah, I think I want to enable to make the tool tip drill completely through the bottom. Yeah. All right, and you know what? I'm going to keep this one here. There's a breakthrough depth. I like that. Is that supposed to be negative? I'll go two, I'll go two millimeters. And then I like to do... Uh, oh, I like this counterboring. That's cool. Breakthrough. I'm going to keep it to wrap it out. Okay, so let's see what happens. I'm... I didn't see any pecking in there. Let me see if I can find pecking. Maybe probably call it something else. And that could be the uh, deep drilling. Oh, the chip breaking. That's what it is. I'm going to do the chip breaking. Pecking depth. Look at that. Okay. Um, no, that's too low. I'm going to go with like four millimeters. Let's see what that does. Simulate. I'm just going to simulate the holes and see what happens. I think it's pretty cool that it can do that. Yeah, there we go. And it's going about two millimeters down, so that's nice. So let's close that. I'm going to... Hopefully I can move this... Well, let's see what happens when I simulate the whole thing. Hmm. Can't simulate both of them? Let's try that. Simulate. Yeah. No, it needs to do the other one first. Can I move it? Wait, I need to close this first. Oh, I need to have one. Okay. Now let's do that. Let me see if I can simulate it without... Yeah, no valid toolpath. So let's click on both of those and then simulate. Okay, it's doing the holes first. That's good. I don't like this green color. Now it's doing the finishing pass. My finishing passes are usually generally much faster, so I might actually have to look and see how I do that. Okay, that looks right. Yep. So let's see, how do I take it to my CNC machine? Let's try that. <laughs> 